By far one of the most nostalgic energy weapons in the Fallout series for me, the classic laser pistol featured in Fallout 3 and subsequently Fallout New Vegas is probably one of the best energy weapons in my opinion. I love the design of the old classic laser guns and I think they're absolutely fantastic, so that's why today I wanted to take a little nostalgia trip and ask if you can beat Fallout 4 with only the classic laser pistol. Now, this is going to be a bit of an abnormal run. Of course, I had to create a character before we could even get started, but because this weapon comes from a mod, there's going to be a few little discrepancies for this run. My special stats were kind of weird. Honestly, I don't really know what to do for energy weapons whenever I play Fallout 4, as I don't use the actual energy weapons in the game that much, so making an energy weapon build is something I don't do very often. Of course, I exited the vault, uh, cough cough, looted everything that I possibly could, and then I had to come into my first little snag. See, this recording wasn't really the start of the actual run. Majority of this run was actually live streamed, and this was about an hour and a half into the run because I forgot to record the original segment, and we could not find the actual classic laser pistol in the game, so I had to resort to console commands to spawn one in. I'm not sure if it spawns at merchants, I'm not sure if it can be dropped by enemies, I'm not sure if it's level locked because, again, it is a mod. So, with that being said, I figured I would just ask my Twitch chat and they said it was perfectly fine for me to just spawn it in, considering it gave me a singular microfusion cell that did not help me out in the beginning segment of the run. Of course, I could just, you know, uh, subsequently go find some in Concord, but the fact that I only had one microfusion cell to start with meant that it was going to be a pain in the ass to actually make it to the corpse. I died a few times early on, but eventually did make it to the Minuteman body that has the laser musket and, of course, the microfusion cells that I need, and picked them up, and then started to, of course, kill basically everything that was around because I wanted the experience and pretty much needed something that I could sell later on to get more ammo. I, of course, would solve my ammo problem later, but early on, I needed everything I could get. So, with that being said, I took everything off of the corpses, headed over to Trash Can Carla, and ended up picking up a little bit of ammo, which wasn't a whole lot, but it would last me long enough to hopefully find some more. Ammo is pretty much only a concern for like the first hour of this run. It becomes pretty easy to find after that because a lot of the enemies in the mid to end game for Fallout 4 are just loaded with energy weapons. I'm not sure why they went so ham with the energy guns in this game. I mean, I feel like they're everywhere. The Brotherhood has energy guns. The Railroad is like half energy guns and then half not energy guns. The Institute is energy guns. They're just kind of everywhere. With that being said, of course, a nice logical place for me to go is Cambridge Police Station since the Brotherhood is there. I did my best to assist Dance with the handful of microfusion cells that I had left, considering I think I had about 10 by the time I made it to the police station, and I really wasn't looking to get into a fistfight with a bunch of ghouls, so I just tried to give Dance some uh, motivational words to assist him as best I could. Inside, I found about five microfusion cells, and there was pretty much no more in the entire building, which was absolutely fantastic, so I decided I was just going to join Dance on his little excursion to ArcJet Systems, which would be a massive help early on, and pretty much, uh, you know, set me up for the entire run, actually, now that I'm thinking back on it. There wasn't a whole lot of difficulty there, other than, you know, trying not to get booped by synths, but at this point I was pretty much safe since Dance was just kind of face tanking everything, and I was just picking up ammo and random scrap as much as I could. The thing about ArcJet that I was really excited for, however, was this singular room at the end of the mission. See, synths spawn infinitely in here, so I just kind of sat here for like 10 minutes and farmed this room, because it meant that I wouldn't really have to farm microfusion cells for pretty much the rest of the run. Dance was actually smart enough to not get cooked alive by the rocket during this, which is absolutely astounding to me. I didn't even know that he would, you know, go in that room with you. I thought he would always just have like that little bit of dialogue where you're like, oh, I, my power armor saved me from being cooked alive. Yeah, I had no idea that he can just avoid that. I don't know why his AI decided to just kind of put him in the safe room with me, but I'm not going to complain. Anyways, it was at this point that I actually started just doing some random side activities. Yeah, I know, right? It's pretty much unheard of for me to actually do that in any of these challenge runs. Of course, first things first, I did stop by Diamond City to pick up some supplies so that I wasn't completely broke on ammo, but at this point I had nearly 900 microfusion cells, so I just spent time going around to random places and just killing shit. Pretty much easy XP, easy things to sell for more ammo, and a few little things that I could set up for later in the run. 
One of which, of course, being the Minutemen, because I would need them to get into the Institute later on. Which, of course, wasn't a challenge. I mean, Concord at this point was pretty much getting swept by this classic laser pistol. This gun is definitely overtuned with the mod. I'm not entirely sure why it does so much damage, but by the end of the run, with a few gunslinger perks and hardly any upgrades on the actual gun itself, I was hitting well over 110 damage per shot, which I'm pretty sure is about on par with the Goss rifle on a rifleman build. I'd have to check the vanilla damage numbers for that, but I'm fairly certain that's pretty close to the damage that a Goss rifle does, at least base without any mods. This, however, did not stop me from abusing this gun and just killing practically everything that I could. I ended up just going into some random sewer systems, clearing out some random raider camps. It was pretty much just an excuse for me to sit there and talk to the Twitch and YouTube chat for like 45 minutes while I went on a murderous rampage. Speaking of, that is actually where most of this run took place. This run was mostly streamed on YouTube and Twitch, but I actually did not end up streaming the last little segment just because I got a little busy and figured it would just be kind of quicker and easier for me to just record that segment and then edit the entire video together, but the majority of this run was done live. So, if you ever want to know what one of the challenge run processes look like, you can either check the VOD for that or show up for one of the future live runs. Anyways, by this point I had moved on to the vault to deal with Skinny Malone and the Trigger Men so that I could rescue Nick, while of course accidentally shooting him in the back of the head to show him who's boss, but the Trigger Men were pretty easy and honestly just I was wiping the floor with everything this run. This run wasn't really challenging per se, but it was definitely fun and I enjoyed using this weapon immensely, and I'm probably going to keep it around just for my own casual Fallout 4 modded playthroughs at this point because the gun was just that much fun to mess around with. I really, really hope that there's like more kind of classic mods. I don't really look at the mods all that much for Fallout 4 anymore, but I'm really, really hoping that I can go in and find some more like older Fallout weapons to do challenge runs with because I find it absolutely entertaining as hell to use these older guns, although they are a bit easy to use. Although, I did do a classic plasma pistol run at one point, and that one definitely wasn't as easy as the laser pistol. That thing fucking sucked. I think it did like 16 damage or some shit. It was not great. But moving on, I have eventually made it to Fort Hagen and progressed the main questline while not getting distracted with side content for once, and I was pretty much just sweeping through this place. It took me like five minutes to run through and get to Kellogg because everything was dying in one or two shots and it was really not that hard to get there. And Kellogg, again, was pretty much just a pushover for me at this point. I just abused pretty much everything that I had on me. I didn't really need to, you know, try to keep myself alive or anything when I was just dealing so much damage. Kellogg was honestly a pushover. This is probably the easiest fight I've ever had with him because I just took one thing of jet and everything in the room died within the 10 second time span the jet lasts. Outside I had a few turrets to take care of and then watch the Brotherhood of Steel airship arrive, who I would be nuking later on in the run because fuck the Brotherhood. I went back to Diamond City so that I could pick up a little bit more microfusion cells just so that I could keep myself topped up and not risk running out, went and did a little bit more side random bullshit and just killed some enemies. I found a copious amount of legendary enemies this run. I do play on very hard, but I'm not sure why I found as many as I did. I probably picked up 60 pieces of legendary equipment throughout this entire run, it was really crazy. But ignoring that, I had to deal with my favorite segment of the game, which we all know is Kellogg's Memories, and that was just so joyous, I love dealing with that so much. I then dealt with some more random bullshit and murder rampages on my way to the Glowing Sea so that I could talk to Virgil, none of which was really worth mentioning. I ended up just fighting the Deathclaw right outside his cave, and no, this footage is not sped up, that's just apparently how fast I'm able to spam this goddamn laser pistol, which to me is absolutely hilarious. I tried to not just, you know, walk up to enemies and barrel stuff them and spam out half of a mag of microfusion cells and kill them immediately because I figure that kind of defeats the challenge of the run, though this weapon really wasn't that hard anyways, and I tried to kind of stay a little more accurate and do what I could. There was an automatic version of this laser pistol that I did try at one point during the run. I'm not sure which point it was, honestly I can't tell what was just being trigger finger spammed and what part was me using the actual automatic version. But I can honestly say that I was not a fan of the automatic variant. I did prefer the semi-automatic version because, you know, there wasn't really an automatic version of the laser pistol back in Fallout 3 or New Vegas that I can remember. At least I don't think there was. I know there was like the laser RCW, but other than that I don't think there was ever an automatic laser gun back in Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, which now that I'm thinking back on it is kind of weird. 
Anyways, I harassed some more random enemies, including ghouls, raiders, and of course more legendaries because they just were spitting them at me this run, and headed off to the Old North Church so that I could deal with the railroad and get the courser trip decoded. Well, of course, since I had decided to side with the Institute at this point, it meant that the railroad was going to be slaughtered. Now, normally the railroad is kind of scary, but for some reason Glory just decided to not use her minigun when I was fighting the railroad, so everyone kind of died immediately, which kind of left me pretty free to just go inside and slaughter all of their employees. Now, I'm not entirely sure why Glory just put her minigun down, it could have been a mod conflict, it could have been Fallout 4 being Fallout 4, and you know, the typical Bethesda it just works, but I'm not going to complain. Moving on, it was back to Sanctuary to hopefully not have any more, god damn it Preston, why are you under the bridge? Yeah, we spent like 15 minutes on stream trying to figure out why Preston was just under the fucking bridge to no avail, and then I spent about 5 minutes walking all of my scrap that I had accumulated from Red Rocket over to the Sanctuary workbench so that I could actually build the signal interceptor. See, I was told by my chat to absolutely torture you guys that would be watching the video and include like three minutes of just no commentary, nothing, just me walking, but I'm a nice person and I'm not going to do that. Not yet anyways, I haven't resorted to tactics like that. Eventually, I got the signal interceptor all built, I'm pretty sure I had everything that I needed, I don't think I had to go anywhere and pick up any of the materials. Also, for some reason, part of that is actually bugged in the quest menu, and it tells you to get an item that you don't actually need to build it. Either that or my game was just completely fucked, it's one of the two. Anyways, I made my way into the institute, and started spamming through dialogue because I absolutely hate these little intro quests for the factions. Specifically the Institute one, because it's a lot of just go here, talk to this person, go here, talk to this person, go here, talk to this person. It just kind of aggravates the shit out of me to do, and normally I just skip these quests in my casual playthroughs with console commands, but I can't do that for a challenge run. I spent some time running my ass to Libertalia, fighting more legendaries on the way, which was fantastic, because I got a bunch more cool weapons that I couldn't use on this run because it was a challenge run, which kind of aggravated me, but you know what, such is life. Once in Libertalia, I just started mowing through the raiders. I pretty much took my time here though. I kind of sat behind cover, picked them off, getting headshots and crits wherever I could, trying to deal with the raiders in the most efficient way possible. Now, I normally don't do this, and I normally just run straight for the boss so that I can get the quest done and go back to the institute, but I decided to shake things up a little bit here and do things in a different route than I normally do, and this is where I stopped streaming the run, so I figured I would try to kind of give you guys a little explanation as to what I was doing here since the people that were watching the run live didn't get to see this part. Now, X6 is probably the most worthless companion in this game for this specific mission. I don't think I've ever seen a more useless AI. Like, I feel like I've never actually seen him fight any of the raiders. He just kind of does nothing, fucks off, and dies during this entire quest, which is really aggravating. So instead of me trying to just face tank everything, I went slow and steady. Anyways, time for the Battle of Bunker Hill. This wasn't really all that bad. I mean, the only faction that really hated me right now was the railroad, and they're not all that hard to kill. It is fairly chaotic down here because there are just so many shots going off at once, but other than that, the entire rescue mission went off without a hitch. Well, I mean, it's technically a rescue mission, but it's basically more like forced slavery. Anyway, I went back to Father to let him know that that was done and deal with more dialogue, and surprise surprise, even more dialogue because then I had to sit through the directorate meeting, god I love the institute quest line for how much dialogue there is, or you know, really just Fallout 4 in general, but ignoring that, it was time for me to finally head off to Mass Fusion, which is probably one of the best spots to actually test your build and your gun to see how it matches up for the challenge run. With Mass Fusion being loaded with Brotherhood members, it's a fantastic spot for me to see how my damage stacks up and how fucked I am when I go into the final mission for the Institute. I was actually doing pretty well here. See, the Brotherhood was getting pretty much melted because, again, like I said, by this point, with the perks that I had and the minor upgrades for this gun, I was dealing basically over 100 damage per shot. Even the Brotherhood Knight got melted pretty quickly, and not even the legendary Sentry Bot after picking up the Brilliant Agitator stood a chance. I mean, he went down in like 15 shots or something. The Assaultrons weren't really that difficult either, which is normally the most scary part of doing Mass Fusion. The Assaultrons can be such a pain in the ass. So, with that being done and all of that out of the way, I could head back to the Institute and get to work installing the Beryllium Agitator into the reactor. 
With that done, I got into a little scuffle with some of the wildlife on my way to free the little scientists that the Institute needed for projects, and other than that, and the gunners who were complete pushovers at this point, I'm pretty sure I one-shot every single one of them that was outside the little cabin, I was pretty much done with this section of the Institute questline and ready to go into the endgame. There was just a little bit more for me to do, that being of course more dialogue and spreading some propaganda in the Institute in the form of a little radio announcement, which meant that I would of course need to go to Diamond City and set up the uh, propaganda ray to spread it even further. For some reason, I decided to just kind of go on a murderous rampage while I was here and just start fighting all the civilians and the guards. I have no idea what I was doing here. I think I just got bored and annoyed with the Institute questline, but ignoring that, I was ready to go back to Father, have one little last little bit of dialogue, and finally be done talking for the majority of the run, get the plan explained to assault the Brotherhood to me, so that I could finally start the last mission for the run, and finally be done. Now, going to the airport was pretty easy. Normally, this place kicks my ass on a challenge run, but I just decided to speedrun going to the generator and get the synths in as quickly as I could. It was kind of ironic watching one of the Brotherhood of Steel members just kind of 9-11 his vertebrate into the Pridwin. For some reason, that doesn't damage the Pridwin. It'd be kind of cool if I could just, you know, shoot it down myself, but I kind of understand why we can't. Anyways, the rest of the generators went off without a hitch, and I was pretty much set up for the rest of the run. I still had all my little institute beacons to get all the synths in, most of the Brotherhood members were dead, and it was just a matter of me kind of sitting here playing a waiting game for the synth that was injecting the virus into Liberty Prime, which went down pretty much easily. I had absolutely no more issues here. None of the Brotherhood even made it to the bottom of the steps at this point. I mean, I don't even think Elder Maxon showed up. It was just pretty much over and done with. On my way running away from the Pridwin, I did get assaulted by some wildlife and then got teleported as soon as I decided to start fighting back because life isn't fair, but with that, I beat Fallout 4 with only the classic laser pistol. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, please leave some suggestions down in the comments below for something that you would like to see me torture myself with next. If you'd like to see more of these runs done live, if you were there for that, please let me know. I did kind of enjoy hanging out with you guys and doing this run live, it was kind of fun to actually have people to talk to for once while I was recording these videos instead of just the voices in my head. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.